Hi, welcome to our show. Well, hi, everybody. Coming to you somewhat live and semi-weekly from the Quad M World Headquarters located in Helena, scenic North Valley. It's the Quad M Show. Here are your hosts, TJ Damon and Jason Becker. And I'm here with special guest. Andy Mac. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> What's happening, dude? Not What's going on? Lot. Not a lot. What's going on? <laughs> oh, oh, it's been a fucking week. Yeah. <laughs> but before we go into my tales of woe, how's your shit, man? How's it going? We haven't we haven't heard from you in a couple weeks. A couple well, actually, yeah, it's been a while. It's been about a month. I think yours was the last show before me and Martin finally got another one out. <laughs> yeah, could have been, huh? Uh, yeah, everything's good. Uh, th- this weather is awesome. I love it. Oh, it's about fucking time. I know. You know, because everybody out there is fucking hearing about Houston flooding and Florida getting the hurricane room and all this type of shit. And I, and I made this bitch last week. Nobody's talking about fucking Montana burning to the ground. Yeah. And then just here within the last couple of days of our recording, we finally, a cold front came in, fucking rain and snow. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. The fucking shit's bringing the smoke down so we can actually fucking breathe. <laughs> you know, everybody's eye color like reverts back to normal from exactly. bloodshot. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like we're all just baking in our cars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I mean, so, so uh, you know, what's, what's the latest and the greatest, dude? Anything... Uh, Nope. Anything going on lately with the you know any stand up stuff coming up? Or nothing new, going nothing on? new. But now that winter's come up, there's going to be a lot more stuff, and we'll be plugging dates and all that type of good stuff. I think something's happening in Spokane, but I don't fucking hold me to that. Right. I don't know. <laughs> we won't know until <laughs> yeah. until it's locked in. Exactly. Until so, it happens. <laughs> uh, we talked about me recording a CD. We, we're not sure. Hopefully, there we're going back and forth about that. That's. I don't know. There's a money issue with that. Yeah. So well, we I don't th- I, did, I don't know did we, if we ever talked about that on the show. I don't know if we kept that under wraps or or what what the plan was there. But oh fuck, then you might want to edit that out. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I don't, no, it was, I'm it, kidding. Because you know, basically, my knowledge of it was, and and, 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 I, and I thank you for thinking of me first on this. Mm-hmm. Was was the text saying, "Hey, you want to make some quick money?" I'm like, yeah. uh, "Okay, sure. What's up?" And and you were asking me to to be the recording and and sound engineer guy for. Yeah, for for the uh, the stand up CD, mm-hmm. record a couple shows and slap it all together and make it sound pretty. Yeah, it'd just be nice to have something to sell to at um, different shows and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, you got to have something out there besides the the glossy eight by tens at your you know at the gimmick tables. Yeah, no kidding, <laughs> no kidding. Just a sign. What's your name? P, uh, P, there, there you go. Bro. You're the you're the fifth guy that's named eBay. Yeah, that's crazy. No shit. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, my 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 week. I'm not going to say it was a week from hell, mm. you know, or anything like that. But Jesus Christ, getting back into the abatement game, it's 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 making me feel my age, dude. Mm. I'm I'm like a fucking like a broke down car on the side of the fucking road <laughs> right now. Well, because I've been, I've been you're fortunate in the fact that you know the last couple weeks. We've been able to actually work here in town. Mm-hmm. You know, on, on on the last show, we were talking about the job I was doing in uh, in, in Great Falls. You know, and and for all you that haven't listened, please go back and listen. It's it's fantastic. Displaced spiders, thanks to Hurricane TJ. It's <laughs> it's it's a great bit. Um, but uh, no, we've been able to 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 work a couple of local you know lo- local gigs here, and that's and that's awesome because the less time on the road is more time that I'm happy. Yeah. You know, it's like I don't mind being on the road, but as I think I have mentioned a time or three before, I love my dad, but rooming with him and being with him damn near 24 hours a fucking day for a week, it, it, you know, (laughs) you know, (laughs) yeah. And you know, I mean, it's it, it, you know, besides the the snoring, and of course, you know, he accuses me of snoring, which I'm I'm uh, this, I this go around, I am going to videotape him, mm-hmm. just just for proof when he starts bitching about, oh Jesus Christ, you goddamn snoring, keep me up all night. Okay, fine. When he when you go to sleep at seven o'clock at night, that phone's coming out, that video camera's going to be running. Yeah, and the yeah. cute and the cute little receptionist down there at the at the at the days. The days in Comfort Suites, Hampton, what the fuck ever we're staying at, they're gonna get they're gonna get the full five minute video 
of 70 year old <laughs> TJ's dad sawing fucking logs. You know, and, and of course, you know, his, his homespun, you know, homespun cute old man racism. Yeah. You know, and all that type of stuff. It's fantastic. But it's one of those gigs where. Like, if I'm on the road, I would just want to be alone in my hotel room. Mm-hmm. But because it's company, it's work, you have to room with somebody. And and quite frankly, just... And this ain't to knock anybody, any of the guys that I work with, but I'm very insular. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just fucking share a room with somebody that I'm not... That I don't know that well. Yeah. So it's basically, I'm either flying solo or I'm rooming with the old man. Mm-hmm. Those are the two options. Those are, those are the... That's it. Um... But holy shit, this, this week, we, we, we had to remove shit from a local government agency, mm-hmm. okay? And it was, you know, basement floor, and initially they tell us, you're working overnights. Because we, we, had, we had talked about this a couple times, we were going to go see It. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I said, dude, I'd love to, but unfortunately I'm going to be, you know, working, so that's not going to be, hello, phone, um, that's not going to be an option. But, you know, play the catch-up game there on that. And uh, so the first night, we go in about 5.30. And basically, it's 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 tearing up carpet. Giggity, 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 giggity. Yeah. I got to do it. Um, you know, but, but, but tearing up carpet and tile and doing all this shit. And you have this long-ass hallway, and you have two landings on either end. So we decide, okay, here's, we'll start off, we'll get these two landings, and we'll fucking call it a night. You know, we'll just do the, the initial thing. And So we, we take all that, you know, shit up, we kind of put it off to the side, and we'll haul it off in the, in the next day or so, and, and do all that. And then they do what they call end capping. It's short for encapsulation. It's mm-hmm. basically putting this fucking uh, 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 f- Foamy, solid liquid. It's almost like I, w- I would liken it to fire extinguisher. Yeah, foam fluid. Put that down on the floor, just to kind of you know keep shit down. Okay, you know, great and all that. And as my dad starts running it, all of a sudden he does like two squeezes off the hose, and he's like, "Fuck!" Like, what? 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 What's up? He's like, "Fire smoke alarm! Fire smoke alarm! Fire smoke alarm!" I'm like, "Okay, so what's the deal?" I'm not Mr. Fucking Technician when it comes to this stuff. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a fucking, you know, you want to ask me about comic book shit? You want to ask me about wrestling? Yeah, I'm your fucking guy. You want to ask me the technical specs on a fucking smoke detector? Not so much. So apparently, the the haze and dust that will come up from this end capping shit, the smoke alarms are sensitive enough that it will pick it up and set off the fire alarm. Mm-hmm. So the boss man comes in. He's like, "Ah, oh, well, you know, we're 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 going close enough to the ground. There's nothing, no, no, no big deal. Nothing's gonna happen. We ought to be fine." Okay. So we do the end cap on that first landing. Everything's fine. Everything's peachy dandy keen. Great. Second landing starts in on the end cap. We're kind of sitting there, and then all of a sudden, I see out of the corner of my eye, this blue light starts flashing, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, shit!" Boss man's what? Then all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Attention, ladies and gentlemen. We have now been notified that there is a possibility of a fire somewhere in the building. Please, get from your seats and evacuate the building in an orderly manner. Do not push, do not shove, do not fucking run, do not do any of the bullshit. Just get the fuck out of the building in a slow, timely fashion. Thank you. Yeep, yeep, yeep. So I was like, shit. So at this point, it's like 8.30, 9 o'clock. No big deal. So we go ahead and pull up. Kind of a big deal, because you're going to have the entire goddamn hell on a fire department fucking come down for a visit. Yeah. So we go up the fucking stairs and out the door, and we each take a position around the building to guide the firemen when they come in. 20 minutes later, they show up. Hmm. Dude, if it was if it was, if it it was was my house, I wouldn't have a fucking house within that time frame. Shit would already be down to fucking cinders. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but they show up, and... We tell them, yeah, no, no, here's what fucking happened, blah, blah, blah. So they have to go in and run the security checks. So then me and and, 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 and the other three working hands were sitting there, standing there by the truck, waiting for the all clear and all this. And someone pipes up, hey, TJ, where's your dad at? I'm like, you know what? I have no fucking clue. 
another five minutes, he finally fucking rears his ugly head, and he comes walking up. I look at him, and I go, I just look at him, I go, you went back in and finished end capping that landing, didn't you? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> my, my, like I said, my, my dad doesn't give two shits. <laughs> he don't fucking care. <clears throat> So then, so then there was that. But then we come to find out that oh no, you guys can work during the day. You just can't haul shit out until the evening when everyone's gone, so nobody will flip out about oh. carrying out hazardous uh, materials and all this bullshit. And it's like, well, fuck. So then Wednesday ended up being a fucking split shift. We go in, we work from like eight or nine until noon. Then you know, I go have lunch, I go see it, mm-hmm. and then I come back to work at about five thirty. And then at that point, it's recutting the carpets because, you know, the the kids, and myself, I'm partially to blame on this too, didn't get deep enough on it. And the fucking, I'll get to that in a second. Um, So we got to, you know, redo that, bring the fucking carpets up and, and you know, start doing the, the, the real, you know, heavy fucking labor work on this, right? And it was it was said many a fucking time when we're cutting these carpets, cut them in by two feet by two feet or three feet by three feet. Square pieces, right? Manageable, because you're going up two flights of stairs with this fucking thing. Mm-hmm. The young bucks don't understand what two to three feet means. So, we have two people that are bringing the carpet from the far end of the hallway to the landing with the stairs that go out. Okay. Hand them to us, we'll fucking haul them out. And you get these fucking ginormous six, seven feet long fucking strips. I'm trying to, you know, you're trying to carry like two or three of them at a time. Go up two flights of stairs, get up, and then you got to fucking throw them over into the goddamn garbage bin. Now, imagine doing that for four straight fucking hours. Mm -hmm. Heavy ass pieces of carpet, plus tile, plus these, you know, fucking bins of tile. Dude, we were there until fucking, it was four hours of that shit. It was a fucking nightmare, dude. I'm, 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 I'm gassed. I'm fucking sucking wind. My ass is sucking buttermilk. I'm fucking dying. Swear to God, I lost at least five pounds just from sweating right then and there. Bottle of water, fucking gone in a second. That's crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it, it, I, it, it's work. I don't mind doing it, but God damn it. Thursday morning, it literally took me like fucking 20 minutes to get out of bed. Oh, yeah. You're uh, sore as all hell. Dude, it you know, like I said, it fuck it's you know it's workhorse, man. You're not a young buck anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I'm reminded of that continuously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you know, we've successfully killed almost twenty minutes. Awesome. Yeah, for that first segment. As long as we're in that twenty minute mark, I'm fine. <laughs> I'll ramble. I don't give two shits. <laughs> Stick around, second segment. We are gonna go ahead, we are gonna talk a little bit about it. The movie. Boom. Pretty damn good. I thought it was pretty fucking good. You liked it? I liked it. I enjoyed it. But I'll we'll get more into that. Awesome. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the passing of comic book legend Len Wein, as well as celebrating the 25th anniversary of Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. We're talking nerd shit this week. Yeah. All right, kids. Stay tuned. It's a Quad M show. Have you checked out QuadMProductions.com lately? QuadMProductions.com is your direct access hookup to order the Enigma comic book series and download the Quad M Show podcast. Check the appearances page for upcoming events and contact us with any questions or comments. Don't be the only lonely soul who's missing out on all the fun. Visit us today at QuadMProductions.com. That's QuadMProductions.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Marty, the official bartender of the Quad M Show, and I'd like to be your bartender, too. If you're in the Helena area, stop by and visit me at the Gold Dust Bar and Casino on Cedar Street on Wednesday nights or Bowser's on Dredge Drive Friday and Saturday nights. Use the special discount code given out during the next segment on your next visit and get a free drink courtesy of myself and the Quad M Show. I'm Marty, and I like to party. You're listening to the Quad M Show, segment two. The 
Welcome back to the second segment of this here Quad M show. We are your hosts, I am TJ. Andy Mac. Losers, in other words. Well, <laughs> and this second segment, as always, is brought to you in part by Mirror Mirror Salon and Spa. Now, I know you folks are seeing them pics online and you're saying to yourselves, Damn, how does TJ get that awesome hair? Well, a very small part of its genetics, kids. The big credit, however, goes to Shauna and all the fine folks over at Mirror Mirror. Now, if you are in the Helen area, make your reservations today for all of your hair, nail, or spa needs. Walk-ins are always welcome. Get in there. Tell them Quad M sent you. Get five bucks off any service they provide. Just went in there today, got my ears lowered. Boom. And I'm looking fabulous. Got all your hairs cut. Damn right. Take advantage of it. We here at the Quad M Show do. Several of our fans do. Join the crowd. Be a part of the cool club, kids. Make your reservations today. Get on in there. Give them a call. 406-603-0644. Or stop on in at 2043 North Last Chance Gulch in Helena. That is Mirror Mirror Salon and Spa. <coughs> So there's that. Something that you know, something I was going to mention on the the last segment there was uh, last night, Thursday night for you kids listening. Whenever I post this, um, met up with a good friend of the show, Jamie. You've met him a time or three. Mm-hmm. We talked about him on the show. Yeah, yeah. God damn, motherfucker. Um, so uh, uh, we ran into another buddy of our of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you pretty you you know him and. Uh, you know, once the booze starts flowing, well, ideas get to going, and and <laughs> <laughs> you like that, and possibly there might be might be a small chance that there might be three guys going to see the Sunday night game, Dallas at Oakland. Oh, really? So so we'll keep we'll keep abreast of that situation. <laughs> Awesome. Maybe, perhaps, if I'm on national NBC TV, there might be a there might be a number five jersey out there flashing the Quad M Show sign on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> just just depends on if I'm sitting in front of the hard camera or not. Depends on <laughs> depends on the level of nosebleeds. If we can get the same seats we got the last time, oh fuck, because we were nine rows up from the 45 yard line. Oh really? When I, when I was like 2012, we went to go see uh, the Saints in Oakland, and uh, oh, they were fucking quality seats, great seats. But but it was kind of hard to actually pay attention to the game when you got the entire fucking Oakland Raiders team standing in front of you, blocking you know any 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 real good visuals. So I'm thinking it's like the next tier up is really where you want to sit. Yeah, you know. It's nice to be down there, but we're right behind the cameras too, so we never there was never a shot of me on TV. Oh, really? Yeah, we were right behind the hard cameras, so I would think the next time I would like to maybe be a tear up, but uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll keep we'll keep the kids posted. But you know what? We also like to keep it posted on porn. Well, that too. The <laughs> FGS Fred G. Sanford Award winner for excellence in stupidity. <laughs> moron. You're a moron. Idiot. Idiot. Don't. You're always so stupid and you take lessons. The FGS Award for excellence in stupidity. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I do my damnedest for them segues. I really do. Throw in a little bit. All right, so we got a couple of them this week. Ironically enough, neither from Florida. Again, trying to trying to buck the trend a little bit. The first one comes to us uh, by way of the Mercury News. Um, Cedric Frierson, age forty two, was arrested in June after Thousand Oaks Police said he gave three counterfeit checks totaling $12,000 to a car dealership as down payment on an SUV. The arrest came after a four-month investigation during which detectives discovered he allegedly passed counterfeit checks to several businesses. Uh, (laughs) You ready for the punchline on this one? Oh, God. (laughs) Frierson was released after posting bail. But police say they determined a counterfeit cashier's check was used to post the bail, and Frierson was rearrested shortly after. You big dummy! 
<laughs> where, where is that again? The Thousand Oaks, California. All right. <laughs> he was scheduled for a court appearance on Thursday, September 14th, uh, but it wasn't clear on Wednesday whether or not he had an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that check bounced too. Yeah. Oh no 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 no! This one's legit, yeah. boss. I'm telling you, this yeah, one's <laughs> this one. This is a good one. I this, is, God. this is the real deal here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and our second FGS winner for the week. And I know I'm going to slay this last name. So uh, give me pardon, pardon, beg forgiveness, and all that type of shit. Richard Geisenheimer. Yeah, that's what I'll Close go with. Close enough. Yeah, that works for me. Richard Geisenheimer. Dick from, Geisenheimer. From Dick, Dick Geisenheimer. <laughs> Geisenheimer, that's awesome. <laughs> His name is my name, too. <laughs> <laughs> from Liberty, Missouri. Uh, decided to hang a sign advertising slaves for sale uh, because he said he's tired of being treated like a racist for flying the Confederate flag in front of his home. <laughs> you big dummy! <laughs> <laughs> if people actually believe that a Confederate flag uh, stands for slavery, well, I might as well just be as stupid as they are, Geisenheimer Jeez. said. <laughs> Ironically, Geisenheimer uh, also has biracial grandchildren and said, if I'd be selling slaves, I'd have to sell one of my grandkids, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the long-haired, bearded man. And, and looking at the, pic, the picture of him online, I would say, uh, just to paint a picture, celebrity most resembles a cross between Bob Seger and Dog the Bounty Hunter. All right. It's kind of what I'm seeing there. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Uh, The long-haired, bearded man who speaks with an electro larynx. (laughs) That yeah, what Kane? Yeah, what Kane? You said that was awesome. I'd have to be a racist too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I don't know if that's going to come over, but if it does, (laughs) that'll be awesome. Uh, the long-haired, bearded man speaks with an electro larynx. Uh, said he flies the Confederate fla- battle flag uh, to make a political statement. Uh, it's for people that are tired of the government telling them what to do and what to think. That's what a Southern rebel is. <laughs> <laughs> However, some of Geisenheimer's neighbors are highly offended and feel disrespected by the sign. Uh, Geisenheimer has since taken his sign down because he believes his point has been made. <laughs> Speaking of signs, did you see that sign at Fenway? No. Uh, <laughs> the people flipped uh, the sign over the green monster that said baseball or racism is just as American as baseball. Say what? There's a big ass sign. What oh, yeah. the fuck? This happened sometime earlier this week. Hey, what's going on on this side? Holy shit! Who post? Who would even post that? I don't know, but it was uh, pretty fascinating. It was, gosh, maybe Monday or Tuesday during the Red Sox game. It is a big fucking sign too, and they got it pulled up real quick and. They're obviously never welcome back to a baseball stadium ever again. But Jesus Christ, I would think not. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> and how, I, my, my thing is, how do you sneak something like that in? <laughs> Just pulled it over. So all that say, all you see is, uh, as American as baseball, they say, God damn, it's, you're right. It's seriously a huge. Let me see if I can pull it up. What would you say, like a 10 by 10? Or? I think it's bigger than that. Really? That's quite a fucking wingspan. Did it did it appear as if it would have been like good thick sturdy poster board? No, or? it was like a big blanket. Oh, well they probably had it rolled up and you know whatever. I'm sure you could sneak that in. Boom. Holy shit, that Boom. is ginormous. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. That's, that's, that's got to be that's got to be at least a 10 foot. I would say I'd say that's probably what 5 by 10, 6 by 10. I think it's even bigger than 10, dude. I'm just kind of guesstimating, you know, an average six foot guy, you know, dangles a little bit lower. But yeah, oh, that's that's fucking huge. Yeah, exactly. And it's fucking people are retarded, man. We live. What a world we live in right now. What a freaking world we live in. Oh my god. Oh, so to you, Cedric Frierson. <laughs> Czech bouncing enthusiast Cedric Frierson and slave trade enthusiast Richard Geisenheimer. Dick Geisenheimer. And we'll 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 even throw in an asterisk to those fine folks at Fenway. Yeah, fucking idiots. <laughs> All of y'all, congratulations! You are this week's winners of the Fred G. Sanford Award for Excellence in Stupidity. You dummy! <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. So awesome. <laughs> The official Paul Tienum of Dick Geisenheimer. Yeah, God, Dick Geisenheimer. He sounds like a car salesman. <laughs> Welcome to Dick Geisenheimer's used cars. Yeah. Come on down. I'll even throw in a I'll even throw a slave in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll get, no one, we'll, we'll get one of them blacks to give you a ride home. We'll tell no, you. No, like, my, oh, no money down. We'll take any trade in. You can, yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Remember, what you what you call slave, I'll call antique farm equipment. Yeah. Come on down to Dick Eisenheimer's. <laughs> and here comes the email. <laughs> yes, I'm hoping one of these days we'll get an angry email. <laughs> Let's get into some hot takes, shall we? News and notes. From all four corners of the pop culture world. And the sign gotta stay hot! You gotta stay hot! You gotta stay hot! It's time for some hot takes. Alright, so this past weekend, and yeah, kids, we're always a fucking week late, but god damn it, you're listening and you love us anyways for it. So this past weekend, the big huge wait is finally over. It finally came out and hit theaters this past weekend. We both had the chance to see it. Yeah, I went opening night on Thursday with the girlfriend, and it was fucking packed. Was it a midnight showing, or? No, it was like 7.30. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was packed. And do you know that Cinemark, they're doing assigned seating now? Yeah. I did not like that. Really? Yeah, because what if you want to go with a group? Of, this happened actually Tuesday. I went with a group of friends. We all got ended up getting separated. Really? Because yeah. I didn't have the group in the way. It, well, because the way that is. Well, well, the other thing that happened, too, was... Uh, the couple that we went with, they booked theirs online, and then me, Buddy, and another person, they we all went showed up at separate times, so we knew never knew where anyone was seating, so we kind of just all sat separate from each other. We were close to each other, but like, but not know, enough to go. Oh my god, that was awesome, yeah, dude! Yeah, exactly. That type not, of shit. Yeah, not sitting next to each other. So right. Um, what'd you think? Uh, well, you know, to 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 fall back real quick on that assigned seating, um. Did they, they didn't already have it on the tickets. You have to do it on that kiosk, right? Mm, okay, yeah. okay. I'm just making sure that we're on the same page with that. Because, yeah, no, I'm okay with doing the kiosk because that way I don't have to fucking walk in. And, 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 and you know, like I'm all jacked up. I'm ready to go. And I fucking walk in and my fucking, my fucking seat's gone. Oh, yeah, no, I understand. And I get that, pissed. Yeah, yeah. So that way at least I know. By the same token, I go to movies generally by myself. Mm. Because a lot of fucking movies, there's one of my biggest pet peeves in the world is people that talk during a fucking Oh, movie. yeah, me too. From the time the trailers start, like you want to talk, you know, during all that, oh, here's your first look at Hollywood highlights with me, celebrity cutie pie, you know, fucking here's your face for the minute and blah, blah, blah. You know, and you want to do all that bullshit, then that's fine. That's fine. That's great. The minute the preview trailers start, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Put your phones away. Don't fucking talk. Oh, I go into cinema mode. I get my rewards points. Exactly. (laughs) They do points now? Oh yeah, they've yeah. You get you get you got your little you got your smartphone yeah. there, right? You get yourself the Cinemark app. Yeah. And then and then when you do that, you know when you when you check in, it'll have like one of those little QRC squares. Oh. So they'll they'll ring that in, so you get points there. Oh. You walk into the movie, you throw it into what they call cinema mode, and it basically just basically turns yeah, into fucking yeah, vibrate. Yeah, one, yeah. And 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 you do that for the duration of the film, you get more points there. Mm. I have no idea how to redeem those points or what I can redeem them for. Well, they, back in the day, you used to be able to... You'd get, like, free nachos and stuff at the end of the movie. They do that all the... Yeah. They're like, it, you know, it expires on this date, but yeah. you can get, like, a free hot dog with a pop, or you yeah, can get exactly. a free large refill. You can get all that shit immediately. But then there's reward points that you can use to get, like, fucking lower ticket prices or a free movie oh, nice. or shit like that. So it's worth it, you know, because mm. I frequent... I mean, I, on, on, on my best schedule... I'm usually once a week going to a movie because mm. I, I I prefer going to movies in the theater. I'm one of those rare birds. I do love going to the movie theater to watch a film. Mm. But um, but yeah. So I mean, to me, it's fucking worth it to have that app and do that. Yeah, you know. Uh, but so, anyways, back to the case in point here. So it, you. I think you told me you went and saw it twice already. Yeah. What's your thoughts on this? I guess. Well, first off, have you read the book? Yeah, long time ago. I'm starting to reread it again, though. Okay, okay, because because I've never read the book. Mm. You know, bits and pieces I've read, but fucking Stephen King is like a thousand pages, and I have a life. Yeah, that's so. twelve thousand pages, and that's like. Yeah, I got shit to do, man. <laughs> yeah, and the lettering, and it's like not even 
that big. So yeah, it's like two two this. point yeah. font. <laughs> yeah, you know. But um, I I I I watched the miniseries when it came out back in like 1990 mm. with Tim Curry. So there was kind of that 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 bar that was set there. So that's where my familiarity is was with that original miniseries. So when you went in, what did you think? Did it meet expectations? Uh, there were certain parts that met expectations. There were some that exceeded it, and there was just some that I was like, ah, oh, this is boring. Um, the part that beat expectations were, I think, all the kids were awesome in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They were absolutely great, funny. The kid that played Eddie, he was hysterical. Um, was that the one with the glasses? No. Where he's just fucking telling jokes all the time? Like, he's, I, no, high five! <laughs> no, I believe he... he, he no, uh... Or was he the, the the little Italian kid, pretty much? The one the mom was like the hypochondriac. Yeah, exactly. And all that. Okay, exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so yeah. What the fuck, gray water, man? Yeah, do you even yeah, do you even know what sepsis is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that kid. He was funny as shit. Um, they were awesome. I think the acting and it was awesome. Not a whole lot of adult characters. Did you notice? Well, okay. See, and and here's here's kind of where my thing is on this. Um, you know, like okay. So down points of the movie. One of the biggest things, and and this was you know kind of just me. And I hate it when fucking movies do this, but they continuously would slap you in the face with it. This is taking place in 1989. Mm-hmm. Continual fucking references to new kids, continual, you know, references to things that, oh, that's happened today. I remember that. Yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah. You, so, like Batman and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah so you spend more time uh, or yeah. Well, what was it? They were panning through like past the movie theater. And it was like Raiders or uh, 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 what was it Last Crusade? I think was the movie they had up no, there. No, it was or? Batman, and it was Lethal Weapon, and then it was uh, what the fuck was the other one? I'm pretty sure it was oh, Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. They it was Nightmare there. Nightmare Before or Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Nightmare, Street yeah. four or five. Yeah, but but you know what I'm saying. I mean, they're continuously throwing this shit at you. Yeah. So if you have somebody that has kind of that fucking you know bullshit ADD. Mm. They'll be like, oh, I remember that. I remember that. You spend more time paying attention to that than you do the movie. Yeah, and I did in that first scene, too, because he had a Beetlejuice poster in the background yeah. of the movie. And I was like, 88? I was like, I don't think that movie... I thought it was made in 89. Well, so okay. then I started back and going, what the fuck? Yeah, well, you gotta remember, uh, uh, the Michael Keaton Batman came out summer of 89. Mm-hmm. Beetlejuice came out before that. Okay. So it fits. It okay. fits within the timeline. Um. But you know, so I mean, there, that was that was kind of really my big knock on the movie. So if that's the worst, that's not a that you know, that kind of tells you if that's the worst thing I can say about this movie, then you're on a good foot right there. Um, I will totally agree with you. The casting of this, the writing, and the acting was stellar. Mm-hmm. Loved the casting of the kids. Um, I loved the interaction between her and Bill, mm-hmm. you know, the stuttering kid. And then, of course, the little chunky kid, Ben, yeah. you know, and his, the poetry on the card and all that type of stuff. I mean, it was just, to me, when you think of a Stephen King film or Stephen King book or a movie like that, generally you're going to think horror, scares, and, and piss in your pants. Generally, generally. Um, to me, it wasn't so much horror as it was kind of like maybe a suspense thriller. There wasn't too much in the gore fest with Mm-mm. it because um, I came in a little bit late. I thought the movie was starting at two twenty, but it started at two. Mm-hmm. And of course, when they say two, that means you no know, twenty minutes of fucking previews. So yeah. I figured, okay, I'll be fine. They're like, "Well, you sure you don't want to go until three I'm like, "No, I gotta fucking work at five thirty. So I'm good. I'm okay with what I'll miss. We're fine. And I walked in right at the point when uh, Georgie was bent over. And, and Pennywise was just starting to talk and his eyes was just glowing mm. and he had the fucking look and he was just starting to fuck with him and getting him going in it. And by the time I sat down, uh, as I was sitting down, the arm was getting ripped off. Yeah. And that kind of brings me to, you know, Hollywood is always weird about violence towards kids. Mm. So I was really surprised they were going to go through with the scene, you know, in that way. Yeah. Because from what my what I've heard, what I've seen, the little bits I've read, um, the book is pretty graphic when it comes to how you know Georgie you know oh, gets yeah, the armor no, yeah, off it's pretty, and all that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> and and you just see, and it's not a spoiler. Fucking, it's the first five minutes of the film mm. to see you know a fucking one armed kid crawling away towards the camera in fucking panic and fear. To have a kid actor having 
to 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 exude that level of fear mm-hmm. and 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 shock and trauma, dude. I'm just like, okay, th- th- this opening scene is fucking winning me over completely. Um, but you know, the interaction with all the kids was fu- was just phenomenal and great. And to speak a big thing on this, uh, what's his name? Bill Skarsgård, I think, is the name mm-hmm. of the actor that played Pennywise. Mm-hmm. I I go I went into the movie with an open mind saying I will take it for what it is but the minute that I felt in any way that he was going to try to be Tim Curry's Pennywise I was just going to call bullshit and yeah. the movie just would have went to hell from there. I thought he did a real good job of making it his own. It's, you know, up to the the individual to determine whether they think his is better than Curry's or not. Mm-hmm. I'm still more of a fan of Curry's. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to shit on what the what what Scarsgard did. I thought yeah. he did a great job as 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 the clown. It's almost like talking about who's your favorite Batman because they're two completely different. Well, Pennywise, as I feel, yeah. Well, you Tim know, Curry played the more comedic role, and then you know Scarsgard tried to play more of the scary role, which sinister did, menacing. Yeah, yeah, he did at times, but then you know there was also that few moments where he did kind of. Yeah, pay homage to uh, Tim Curry by being a little goofy and all that type of stuff. And yeah, but even even when he was goofy, he still had a sinister vibe. Oh yeah, no, him, yeah, know? exactly. A lot like uh, the almost like the Joker back in the Dark Knight. Yeah, Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah, yeah. It would it would be like it would be like comparing Jack Nicholson's Joker versus Heath Ledger's Joker. Exactly. That's and, better. Yeah, and and and. Uh, but I mean, you know, great moments. Um, you know, in there, like when uh, the fucking bully, what's his name, Henry. Henry, uh, Henry it, Bowers, yeah, yeah. When uh, uh, when he comes in, and I mean, the fucking book's been out forever, so again, I'm not. Yeah. Boy, spoiler alert! Um, when he comes in the house, and the fucking TV is doing its subliminal message that you get all throughout the film, mm-hmm. like it tried doing it with the Beverly girl when she came in, and yeah. her dad was yeah, in there. Exactly. You would, you saw that the oh, we love to play in the sewers and all yeah, that shit. Exactly. Um, but when when the fucking bouncy ball is around, kill them all, kill them all, and he's back there just staring. He's not even talking. It's the, all the kids are bouncing and happy, and the fucking woman's up here, and he's just sitting there staring and yeah. glaring. That it was it was fucking cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, but uh, uh, going back going back here, I liken it to comparing, uh, you know, James Bond. Mm. Everybody sets the bar with Sean Connery. Yeah. Has there been great James Bonds since then? Sure. Daniel Craig was fucking phenomenal. Has there been James Bonds that, yeah, we don't give two shits about? You know, sure. George Lazenby, one fucking movie. Nobody ever pays attention <laughs> to him. But at the end of the day, the bar will always be set by, you know, here again, in this case with it, Tim Curry. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, Starzar did a great job, and I'm not going to shit on him. Um, talking to your thing about the kids. Um... I like the way that they presented this because mm-hmm. <clears throat> you go back to the miniseries and the miniseries could be a little bit uh, dislodging, disjointing, disorienting. I don't want to say disorienting, but it would continuously go from the adults flash back to the kids, mm-hmm. back to the adults, flash back to the kids. And I like the way that they are going with this in that it'll be two movies. And we, I, I'll speak on that in a second, too. Um where the first movie is about the kids and the initial contact and, de- and the initial defeat mm-hmm. of Pennywise. And then the second movie focuses on the adults when they're in their 40s, middle age, and have to go back and face them again. Correct. Because that was a whole premise of the book, was the, the adults had to go back and face their fear one more time. And I, I like the way that they're doing that, in that it's not going to be disjointed with flashbacks and bullshit. You maybe with the second movie when it comes out, you may have like a five minute recap. Mm-hmm. You know, previously on it chapter one, it sounds like they're going to go back and forth again. And in, in the second movie, you yeah, think they will? I think they will. Eh, I I really I don't know. I hope they don't. I I hope they don't. Because I believe, I believe they film scenes for the second one already. Because it's not going to come out for another two years, and those kids are all going to be going through puberty and stuff like that, and it's all going to be... Sure, sure. You know, so I believe there's... Is it going to be two years? <sighs> I would assume it'd come out within a year. They'll start filming in March 2018. They don't even have a script yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I know everyone's like, oh, they're already making another one. And then, you know, 
obviously with what Warner Brothers made off this fucking movie, of course, are going to. Of course. But, I mean, like I said, the original plan was, as the movie's wrapping up, right? And here's where you can tell. I know why I shit on those millennial snowflakes quite a bit. Mm. You know, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> fucking right at the, after, after the movie wraps up, and all of a sudden you get the big it on the screen, and then the chapter one kind of fades in. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I got like two or three idiots behind me going, what the fuck? How do they know there's going to be a second movie? What the hell? How, how, what, what do you mean? What? That should be wrapped up. They're, they're fucking milking this to us? What the fuck? And I'm like, I wanted to turn around and smack them and say, do you not know what? Do you not know the story? Have you not paid yeah. attention? Did you not do any homework on this? Do you not know? Uh, but I just, I, I fucking, I just let it go. I just, I just said, you know what, you morons, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I knew going in, it was not, there was not going to feature any of the adults whatsoever. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, the movie to me kind of came off as more of a cross between like Stand By Me and Stranger Things. Yeah, exactly. It was great suspense thriller. I don't know that I would really call it horror. No, I wouldn't call it that either. You know, I mean, there was gore, but that's about it. Well, really two scenes. Yeah. You know, you had the, well, okay, maybe three, depending on your sensibilities. You had the Georgie getting his arm ripped off. You had the infamous uh, bathroom scene with Beverly, mm. which, if you remember the ABC miniseries. Yeah, they did the same thing. Too. It was, well, it was just a balloon that came up and popped. And oh, you that's had like right, a, yeah. You had a little bit of red jello fly everywhere. This, Jesus Christ, it was Johnny yeah. Depp, Nightmare on Elm Street, shit just flying all over everywhere. Fucking and, carry type stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and then maybe when, uh, when, when the Jewish kid was getting his face Chomped oh, on. yeah. Chomped well, there's also they had uh, uh, that girl. She was cut in half, and she was screaming when they were in the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The not scary door. Yeah. Not scary at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, there might be scenes that you know might freak people out a little bit, like you know the fucking leper chasing, yeah, chasing Eddie around. Mike might get somebody, but I mean that that you know. I'm not going to say it's a movie. You know, it, this isn't a movie for the weak at heart. Yeah. But, you That's know. kind of what my girlfriend and I were talking about. We were talking about it. They were like, yeah. you know what? When we were kids, this would be a movie that you could watch and not have a problem. But I think today's kids, they'll watch it. And be like, I saw a clown in the hallway, and now I need to, right. you know. <laughs> but, but, you know, her kid went and saw it. He said he liked it. And, you know, it was a good time had by all. Yeah. Honestly, to me... For my sensibilities, this movie could easily be PG-13. Mm. The only reason it's not is because the kids are just fucking foul-mouthed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> exactly. And like I said, it's your typical 80s movie, just like the Goonies and yeah. Stand By Me and all that. It's just fuck shit, fuck shit. Yeah, it's, basi- it's mm. basically a real life... Well, I can't say real life because it involves demons and... Yeah. You know, who but, but yeah, it's like a darker version of the Goonies. That's a great yeah. example right there. But, uh, you know, and, and then... Um, Oh, what the hell? What the hell? Oh, um, it definitely has its, at least for me, I think the creepier moments didn't involve the clown. It didn't involve the demons and the hallucinations or anything like that. Like fucking Beverly and her pedophile father, yeah. incestuous father. That really fucking made me feel uncomfortable watching that Yeah, he that was scene. creepy as all hell. Which again speaks to just how good the acting was in exactly. that movie, but that it was that type that that the 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 scariest horror to me is always the most realistic horror. Exactly, you know, like you can have fucking you know Hellraiser and Freddy and Jason. And Lord knows we love us some horrors. <laughs> yeah, the horrors. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something like say Texas Chainsaw Massacre or House of a Thousand Corpses, or what's that other one with Liv Tyler? That one kind of always creeped me out. Uh, Strangers, Empire, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah, Empire Records, uh, st- uh, Strangers or whatever, where those people break into the house and they just fucking cut them all up and shit like that. Was she in that one? Yeah, she was. She was the lead actress in it. That one always, I don't know why that one always got my goat though. Really? Yeah. But that's just it. Like I said, the more realistic horrors, the ones that I'm always more. You oogged out by, yeah, as opposed to the other shit. But I mean, all in all, so like, like if you had to, if you had to give a, a, a rating, what would you give it? I gave it three out of five. There was just some parts where I was just like, 
all right, get over it. Like what? Okay, so what? What did you think drug down? Like what were the scenes that drug on for you? There was, okay. There's a few parts where he's like becoming like when at the end. It was like he was in the refrigerator or whatever, and they're in the house. Right. And he starts twisting. And he and does his little transformer. <laughs> Shit. It's just he just get get to it. He's there's no reason for him to be transforming that much. <laughs> yeah. Or at the end when like they f- <laughs> kill um Georgie or whatever and it turns into it. Right. That took too long too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean there was but there was that little bit of emotion there too and the yeah, fact and that you know, I, I will love my brother, I will always love my brother. You're not my fucking brother. Boom. You yeah, know? exactly. But then when he said then it's you know, he starts yeah. slowly turning into the clown, you're like, Fucking come on. You know, every time fucking Pennywise would like, you know, run at the camera with that crazy, it always reminded me of, like the the fucking cartoon sound effect of the fucking legs all flopping and flying <laughs> before it goes. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why, but every fucking time, that's just the first thing that popped into my mind. Um, you know, I dug it. I'd probably, you know, I'd give it a little bit higher. Out of ten, I'd give it a solid eight five. Yeah. You know, it's not quite a nine. You know, like I said, there's there's some things to it that you know kind of eh, threw me off. Mm-hmm. But the acting and the writing in and of itself more than makes up for it. I do say go if you haven't already, go see it in the theaters. It's definitely worth the fucking time and money. Exactly. Just make sure if you go with a group of friends, they're fucking assigning seats. So, <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, that pissed me off. <laughs> oh, all right. So, uh, next up, um, here this uh, the past week and a half or a couple weeks or so, uh, news came out: the passing of comic book writing legend Len Wein, passing away at the age of sixty nine years young. I was always a big uh, Swamp Thing fan, so this kind of hit a little, a little home, mm-hmm. a little close to the heart, I guess. So, I mean, Swamp Thing was always, you know, one of my first comic books. We'd go to the comic book shop and get, and you know, I guarantee you, he's probably ninety percent of those comic books that I have. Yeah, still, they're probably flooded by now, but. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, because um, uh, you know, for for those not in the know, Len Wein. Um, Comic book writing, and like I mentioned before, comic book writing legend. Um, first professional start, uh, his first professional issue was uh, Teen Titans number 18 back in 1969. Wow. Um, co-creator of uh, uh, co-creator of Swamp Thing, as well as The Human Target. If you guys remember that TV show on Fox for a couple seasons, wish that wouldn't have gotten canceled because I, I did enjoy that very much. I don't remember that one. Um, what's his name? Jackie Chan. No. <laughs> the guy that played Warship. And then he played Freddy Krueger in the new Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, Jackie Earl. Earl Haley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was he was like uh, the, the human target sidekick on the show. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but the the, the, the uh, he co-created now. Here are your kids. If it wasn't for Len Wein, you wouldn't have Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Co-creative Wolverine. Um, he was writing the Hulk at the time. And then a cup about a year later... Um, he is basically the guy responsible for the new uncanny X-Men that we knew and loved growing up. He create, co-created Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus. Um, he wrote that, that uh, giant, giant size X-Men number one, as well as, I believe, issue 94. And then it kind of got handed off to Chris Claremont after that. Um, this guy had really literally had his hand in everything from the 70s, 80s, and the 90s. You name a comic, he wrote it. Uh, yeah. He he was a writer on it. Action Comics, Superman, Batman, Detective, Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, over at Marvel, Amazing Spider Man, Hulk, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Daredevil. The only book, uh, Thor. The only book he didn't write was Captain America. Yeah. Um, but you know, by and large, um, he was also an editor. He was the editor on the seminal uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, he was the editor on what's argu- what a lot of people arguably say is the greatest comic book ever written, uh, Watchmen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, this guy had his hand in everything. He also uh, played a ca- was a cameo in uh, the Swamp Thing TV show for a bit too. Did he? Did yeah, he? Yeah, okay. I, I can't remember who he was, but I remember seeing him. and I was like, "Holy shit!" Were you? Were, uh, no, no. Were you old enough to remember the USA series when it came absolutely. out, or did you was, watch it? No, in... absolutely. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Came okay, on at ten thirty every Sunday night. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think I think I was watching it on Friday night. Yeah, maybe we were too. Because I'd be at my grandparents' house and I'd always go there Friday night, so it was Friday nights. Yeah, yeah that's when I, that's, if I remember correctly, that's when it would be yeah, on ten thirty or eleven. Yeah, yeah, because you figure, I mean, you, you think about it, how how fucking pimp is Swamp Thing to be able to bang Adrian Barbeau and Heather Locklear? He's mad, man. And then he gets his own fucking TV series. Yeah, no shit, dude. And Swamp Thing's the best. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, when I fucking heard that, and then I, I heard I heard some of the craziest sh- you know, I, I, I went and as I was doing a little bit of research on this, um, his first wife was Glennis Oliver, who was a, a, a long-standing colorist in the Marvel. She did like, my, my, I think most of her coloring work was with X-Men, but she did like a lot of stuff. So, you know, he married the, the colorist there, and then they got divorced, and he married um, this, uh, this, he married his second wife. And at some point, and I don't have it written down as far as the year, but at some point their house had burnt down. And so lost a lot of memorabilia, like from, you know, his, his career mm. in the comics industry. Lost his, uh, a couple, he won a couple of Phoenix Awards. Those were lost in the fire, the whole nine yards. And his wife, four-time winner on Jeopardy. His wife was? Four-time winner on Jeopardy, won, won over $60,000. Jesus Christ. When asked what she was going to do with the money, it was basically restore and try to get back the, the some of the stuff we had lost in the fire. Oh, shit. I'm like, wow. That is fucking crazy. Lost it all on double Jeopardy, though. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, that's that's one of those sad deals. It's it's. I mean, you can go through my stack of fucking comics. I guarantee at least twenty five percent of my books in there. Len Wein wrote them. Oh yeah, usually mine too. And I don't have as many as you, obviously. But I guarantee you, ninety percent of my books have him because I have my brother's book, and it was between me and him. It was X Men, Batman, and Swamp Thing. So yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, pretty like, much a hundred percent of his yeah. career right there, and and he was the writer on Batman when during my early seminal days, mm. and I went back and I, I remember what my favorite issue of Batman was, and it was sad because I don't, I'd like to think that he was the writer on it, mm. but I'd have to double check. You know what? Give me two seconds. Give me All two right. seconds. I'm gonna fucking double check this. All right. As I pull out my my giant hardback Len Wein Batman, yeah, hardcover compendium there. Um, I just want to double check here, so, yes, yes, he did write it. I mean, he was responsible for probably the first Batman story that I had ever read in those old digests from back in the late 70s and early 80s. Mm. They had Batman Murderer, where he gets accused of murdering Talia Al Ghul. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, of course, it's 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 all bullshit, and it's just something to frame the Batman on. Uh, but my personal favorite story was Batman uh, 325, I believe it was. Nope, Batman 321, Dreadful Birthday, Dear Joker. <laughs> and this was the beauty of, of the Silver and Bronze Age of comics, is that you can have the most ridiculous plot points in the fucking world, right? Mm-hmm. Like, apparently it's ba- it's Joker's birthday, so his greatest way of getting revenge is getting all of Batman's associates. He got Rob and Commissioner Gordon, and somehow uh, uh, Joker considers Alfred a Batman associate, but yet has no clue that fucking Bruce, Bruce Wayne's Wayne, Batman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so what he ends up doing is he straps them all to a giant cake and candles, and the whole thing is that uh, he wants Batman on the very top, and he's going to light up the cake and blow everything up, and, and it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And then in the end, he turns out not doing it, and they have a surfing contest. One was had by all. <laughs> well, you know, you're close. There was a cha- there was a, 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 a chase in a speedboat. Yeah, that's what I saw. I was like, there's a surfing <laughs> contest, just like the old Adam West Batman. Yeah, and, 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 he, and he done gets himself blown up. But, oh, yeah. of course, as we know, it's comics, so Joker does not die. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, that's, that's probably... Saved by a shark repellent. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, so, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it, it, was a sad, it was a sad note, footnote there. Safe home, Len. God yeah. bless. God bless you, brother. All right, so speaking of Batman, see how we segue in that. That's the, the segue show. I think I'll switch it from the Quad M show to the segue show. Why not? <laughs> uh, We're just this... on segues the whole entire time. <laughs> it's like he didn't mean it like that. He meant it like. That'll, that'll, be, a, that'll be an awesome YouTube. Yeah. We'll, we'll switch it over and make it a YouTube show and do it that way. 
But uh, this past week celebrated what probably arguably could be considered one of the greatest, or if not at least one of the top five co- uh, cartoon series of all time. Batman the Animated Series turned 25 this past week. Which is crazy. I remember watching that on the WB back in the day, which is now the CW for your kids listening at home. Yeah, back when there were Saturday morning cartoons. Exactly. And it didn't even start on Saturday morning. It came on a Saturday night for the first week or so. Yeah, yeah. on the Fox Network back in 92 was when that all started, yeah, way I back think, in the fucking day. I think down in Arizona it was... Um, was it affiliated through... Because it was ninety two, I don't know if I don't know if WB or UPN were even around at that point. Oh, really? Yeah, it, yeah. it would have been WB for us, I think. Yeah, man, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, fucking, it's it, 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 this is the shit that makes me feel old. Not the fact that Batman the Animated Series turned nine, turned twenty five years old, or that it premiered in ninety two, but the fact that it premiered when I was sixteen. And we're celebrating its twenty fifth anniversary. I'm like, God damn. Well, then I was four. <coughs> five, fuck you! Fuck five, you! Five, 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 man. <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, just thanks to that show, um, I've gone on record, flat out. Kevin Conroy is by far my all-time f- favorite Batman actor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine too. Because I, I don't give a shit who you are. I consider voice actors to be actors. Because mm-hmm. they put, you know, a, a good one will fucking bring life to a mediocre cartoon, and a bad one will fucking take the greatest animation and just turn it into the shits. Yeah. And you know, you you look at the all star cast that they had on that series. You know, Mark Hamill as Joker, Richard Mall as Two Face. John Glover, um, if you ever watched Smallville, he was Lionel Luther. Yeah. Um, he he was the Joker. Or not Joker, he, he was Riddler. Um, fucking Paul Williams. Did you ever watch Smokey and the Bandit? A long time ago. Well, I don't know if you remember Big Enos and Little yeah. Enos. Okay, Little Enos. He did the voice for Penguin. Um, fucking who else you had? Adrian Barbeau was fucking Catwoman. Yeah. Um. Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. was 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 Alfred. Um, Brian Cranston was randomly in it sometimes too. Was he? Yeah, he was in it. He I don't rem- I can't remember who he played, but he was randomly in it too. Uh, fucking uh, uh, Roddy McDowell. Yeah, was uh, the Mad Hatter. Yeah, you know I just you know I would sit there, and sometimes when I'm working on Enigma, you know I'll have. On my left side screen, I'll be doing my work. Mm-hmm. And on the right side screen, I'll have like a DVD running. Every time a Batman episode, you know, and I'd be running through, I got, I got like the full series on DVD and all that. When an episode would end, I would sit there and hit pause when the credits came up. Mm-hmm. Just so I could sit there and, 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 and take a look and see who the voices were. And you go through and you just see the actors and the talent they had brought in with that. The only downside was the, the animation was so stylized that everybody at that time started copycatting it. Mm-hmm. And it worked It worked for Batman in that weird way. The, sim- the simplicity of it worked, but then it became a case of everyone doing that simplistic art style because they just wanted to be lazy. Yeah. And I was not a fan, you know, of, of the copycat bullshit when it came to that. But... Um, what, uh, what would, you know, aside from like, say, you know, the obvious, you know, Joker episode or anything like that, do you have, do you have any episodes of, of the animated series that sticks out to you? The, uh, I can't remember the name of the episode now, but I was just going to drop it. The one where Mr. Freeze becomes Mr. Freeze. Oh, God. Uh, probably one of the most like heartbreaking, like romantic yeah. fucking things you could ever see in your whole entire I, life. I just want to save my wife. Nora. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, anytime I need a good cry, I turn that on YouTube and I just bawl my fucking eyes out. Yeah. But yeah, it was awesome. That's th- probably one of my favorite ones of all time. I felt bad for him too because it was like a couple, it was like, you know, like during that last season, that's when, you know, they had found the cure for Nora mm-hmm. and she fucking left him. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and so exactly. then, then he's even more fucking heartless and he turns into a fucking head on, on spider legs yeah, exactly. running around. I'm like, fuck, you guys are killing me here. You ruined a perfectly good story, goddammit. Exactly, but see, and that and that one was written by Paul Dini, mm-hmm. and you know he's 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 a fucking I mean, a, a great writer. You know, here again, without Paul Dini, we would never have Harley Quinn. 
Yep. You know, because he's the one with the mad love, and he's the one that created Harley Quinn as a sidekick. Um, but if you go through and you look at the majority of those Batman episodes, I would probably say he's written, you know, six out of the top ten. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, very, very prevalent. And, God, if I had to sit there and think about a favorite episode, hmm... God, that's tough. That's like trying to fucking pick your favorite kid. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. But I think the ones that usually stir the emotions the most are the better ones. But I think my favorite episode is where, you know, three kid, these three kids are walking down the street. And they each tell a story from what they've heard about Batman. So you get, like, the first kids talking and it's like drawn in the 1950s Dick Sprang style. And like you've got Gary Owens doing the voice of Batman. And you got Michael McKean doing the voice, voice of Joker. Mm-hmm. And then um, the next one, I believe, is the... I can't remember. The, the third one I can't remember, but the second one that I do remember is it's like a Dark Knight it's it basically it's the Dark Knight Returns, mm. and they do that scene where he's fighting the the mutant leader, and if I remember correctly, I believe Ron Perlman was doing the voice of Batman for that part. But then you know, and then the third Hellboy, kid, <laughs> yeah, 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 and um, then the 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 kids end up coming across Batman taking out Killer Moth, or no, it was Firefly, as he's about to fucking blow up a, a movie theater, or some shit like that. Mm. And so then they're like, oh, cool, we finally met Batman, and fucking he leaves him like a batarang or some shit like that or whatever. Um, but that, to me, was kind of like my favorite episode in that it reaffirmed the belief that on a street on the street level, Batman is supposed to just kind of be a myth. Mm. You know, it's not like the fucking 60s campy shit where, you know, hi, I'm your friendly neighborhood yeah, Batman, knew, and we're yeah. going to come down, commissioner, and we're going to work in the daytime. He hid in the shadows. He was a myth. People... You know, we're like scared of the fucking Batman. He was as a big thing. foot of, big foot of Gotham. Yeah, he was fucking. He was he was he was Nessie. He was yeah. Gotham's Nessie. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, uh, it's it. I, I where in 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 cartoon history because you're you're a cartoon. Guy, oh yeah, yeah. Where where would you rank it as far as as far as you know, like say top. Five top ten. Where where would where would the animated series fall? That's got to be up there. That's probably got to be number one. It was just so that was. I mean, besides the Tim Burton Batman, this is the next darkest Batman we've ever got to see, and it's kind of kind of painted the way for Batman as far as games and as far as um even the coming up on the the Chris Nolan movies and now the Ben Affleck Batman. I mean, it's kind of I guess held the torch for as long. And you know what? It still holds up today. Oh, definitely. No, and, I mean, it, it set the bar. Exactly. And, like, you know, you can watch, you know, Family Guy or whatever right now. And, yeah, it's funny. But this is this is probably one of the best from top to bottom. The animation, the writing, mm-hmm. the acting is probably absolutely the best. Yeah. Best I mean, there, there's cartoon. a reason there's a reason why people still clamor for <laughs> Kevin Conroy to do. You know, if it's if it's if it's animated and it's Batman, where the fuck is Kevin Conroy? Exactly. You know, same thing with Joker. It's animated. There's Joker. Where's Mark Hamill? Exactly. You know, and 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 to have it hold that level to set that bar. You know, here again, we're talking about fucking Tim Curry as as Pennywise. Mm-hmm. We're talking Sean Connery as James Bond. James Bond. This is is this is the standard bearer. This is the watermark that you have to live up to. And I would say I would definitely rank it in my top five. Yeah. And it's a testament also too to 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 Bruce Tim and all of his folks there at the the DC animated. Mm-hmm. Because like a lot of people say how Superman is a the the hardest character to write for. Yeah. How do you write for somebody that can't be beat? Yeah. Watch Superman the animated series. Mm-hmm. Fantastic character writing. Mm-hmm. Great stories. And if you depower him, he's okay, but that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. You want to fucking beat the, you know, you want to beat the unbeatable force? Attack the heart. Attack the mind. You don't, you know, that's, his best villains are always the ones that don't use the brute strength. Mm-hmm. That's why Lex Luthor will always be his greatest adversary. Exactly. Um, same thing because of that, we then, you know, leading into, like, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. 
just that right there was that genesis, that gestating beginning for all of that great shit that came out of it. Mm -hmm. That's the flagship. So, yeah, no, I definitely give it top five. Oh, yeah, easily. (laughs) All right. Well, let's go ahead here. And, you know, kids, since since Marty's not in, uh, we're not going to have the horrible moments in Marty history. But uh, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll kind of have a little bit of Reddit fun because uh, you said you had something you wanted to revisit and talk a little bit about. Yeah, we got to make it quick, though, if that's all right. We will, we will make it okay. quick. We'll have it quick. So, all right, all gang, right. we will be back. We will do our third segment. This is the Quad M Show. Stay tuned. In a city where corruption rules the streets, only one man can stop the serial killer known as the Blood Bandit. James Kurt, a former police officer turned private investigator, must race against the clock to stop the madman before he achieves his ultimate diabolical goal. When JK's brother Alex is thought killed in the line of duty and mysteriously returns with no memory of his past life, the stakes are raised even higher. Enigma, the comic book series from Quad M Productions, written and illustrated by TJ Damon, with colors and effects by Jason Vickers. Enigma. Order your copy at quadmproductions.com today. Hello and welcome to a new season of TJ's Bowling Scores for the Week. I'm Connie Leangus. This week Fucktard rolled a 137, a 117, and a 133 for a 387 series. Well, it's nice to see some things haven't changed, despite you running Jason off. The show's still going and you still suck at bowling. For fuck's sake TJ, if you were any more inbred you'd be a fucking sandwich. Anyone who ever loved you was wrong, you cough and dodging oxygen thief. I hate you. I never believed in religion until I met you, now I know for sure there's a hell. And with that I'll take my leave and will return for next week's round of misery. So, until then, I'm Connie Leemgus, fuck you and good night. You're listening to the Quad M Show. Segment 3. To the third and final segment of this here Quad M show. We are your hosts once again. I am TJ. Andy Mack. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It feels thank you. And this segment is brought to you in part by DeeplyDapper.com. Now, you've heard us go on and on and on about the sweet merch that you can pick up over at DeeplyDapper.com. Original art prints and books, vinyl wrapped metal flasks, custom key hangers and light switch plates, as well as those handmade soaps, all based on your favorite Nerd World properties. But there is so much more. Get over there. Take a listen. Two excellent, excellent podcasts they serve up. Uh, the 3D Podcasket, as well as the Robot Kraken. Get in there. Give them a listen. They do a hell of a fucking bang-up job. If you want your 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 nerd fix when it comes to horror films and comic books and life doing conventions and, and being on the road, check these guys out. They are great. And and also, too, you know, they're, they're supporters of the show. They love us. We love them. Chris McClanahan, longtime friend. And check out their recipes. <laughs> they, got, they got food product on there, too, kids. They got something for everybody. Get in there. Go check them out. What are you waiting for? Well, this show to be over. Then go check them out. Once again, that's DeeplyDapper.com. Deeply Dapper. Better living through tentacles. And one thing, you know, I was going to say it at the beginning, at the opening of the show, and I kind of forgot to, but I do want to give a shout-out. I do want to give some props to uh, 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 good friends of the show, Chris McClanahan, uh, Derek Crabb, and, of course, um, regular co-host Marty Kurtzweiler um, for, for going out. And when the show posts, they're liking it, they're sharing it, telling everybody to get in on the, the Quad M Show bandwagon. That's so fucking important. Um, if, you're, if you're a fan of the show, if you're listening, like us on Facebook. Get over there, uh, facebook.com slash Quad M Comics. Like us on the Facebook and when, the, when you see the show posting on Facebook, get out there, like it, share it, get it to as many people as you can. The numbers have been going through the roof in the last couple months. Let's keep that fucking trend going. If you're digging the show, share the show. Get everybody in on the bandwagon. Boom. So let's go ahead and we'll do a, a half-assed impromptu kind of Reddit fun. 
Reddit fun with Jason. And it's not quite Reddit fun, but apparently, okay, so so something had come up that you that, 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 that you had a call back to, and you you wanted to you wanted to dish on a little bit. What do you got? All right, so ma Tuesday. This past, like a couple days ago. Correct. Yeah, okay. I had to. I took care of. Uh, I went. I went. Did the. Uh, you know the the stepdad duties. I had to go pick up Kayla's kid at um, school and everything like that. Sure. You and I had a discussion, and then okay, then was it Tuesday night? It would have been Wednesday. Wednesday night, something happened. I was pissed off. So Thursday, I went to uh, local uh, j- jujitsu deal <laughs> okay uh, uh like a dojo or whatever it was my uh buddy was like come in get some stress relief fucking hit, hit the bags hit some bags th- toss some people i'm like all right cool <laughs> okay <laughs> so i'm like sitting there learning tossing people and everything like that and this all ties into one big story i believe i text you sometime monday night i said uh whenever you asked me to do the show and i was like yeah i can do it friday at six that's fine and uh there's something that's been bothering me. Her kid's 10 years old, and we talked about how many 10-year-olds do you think could beat you up? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I re- okay, I remember this. I saw, I, saw, I saw how many, like, after, like, tossing an adult human being around, I don't think there's a fuck enough of these 10-year-olds that could beat an adult man up. Man. <laughs> Dude, we're, you just fucking we're... clock one. <laughs> if you just clock one right, right across the fucking face... I'll tell you what, there's no way the rest of them come. They're like, holy shit, man. He just fucking knocked them out. Holy shit, he just knocked out the toughest yeah, kid in school. Exactly. <laughs> you just sit there and you're like, fuck, man. But you get one of these like SEC down south fucking 10 year old ki- kids that you see on Sports Center. They're like 375 right. that are getting fucking LSU. <laughs> Letters from LSU <laughs> and shit like that. They're in the third grade yeah. getting the fucking acceptance and award Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's not enough fucking... There's not enough. But if they get the... You get the 375 kids, then you're like, yeah, that's, that's trouble. <laughs> but I, I guess that's always kind of bothered me since the first time I've ever been on your podcast in December that this has all kind of been bullshit and I don't really fucking appreciate what's going on right now. <laughs> so, 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 so you're, you go and you go into this fucking dojo. Okay. And, and, I, I have to as we're talking you're throwing 10 year old kids around Did I'm not they, throwing I'm not throwing 10 year old I'm throwing a grown man around oh okay okay because okay. the, the visual I'm getting is like oh yeah no I'm not just fucking hocking kids there you go the you're like you're like Anakin wiping out yeah, the fucking I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not, the little chat <laughs> yeah I'm not like John Cena clearing out a ring or anything like that I'm just sitting there uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it's like basically learning how to toss someone and how to fall and stuff. So you're just kind of just <laughs> right. going, and they're falling and then they right. back up. Yeah, and, you're, you know. you're you're taking bumps. You're yeah. you know you're going through the paces, exactly. doing the shit. Exactly, and great stress reliever too. So thanks, Kyle, over at uh, I think it's Helena Jiu Jitsu for letting me do that. So so are you uh, are you are you signed up? Or are you gonna are, are you gonna be? Yeah, I think I'm gonna be a regular there. World class, you know, you know the the white belt hall of fame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hang my gi up in the fucking rafters and stuff like that. I don't know whatever happened to mine. Yeah, no, I did karate for a good couple of months back in the third grade. <laughs> I'm in the white belt hall of fame. Hell's yeah. Fuck, I don't want to dirty that shit up with that one stripe, two stripe, three stripe bullshit. Yeah, no. no shit, plus... This belt know. is pure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pure white motherfucker. Platinum, man. <laughs> Platinum player. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, when you sent that text to me, I was like, okay, you know, you're like, I got something I really want to fucking get off my chest, you know, and, and it goes back to something we've talked about before, and I'm like, okay... Do do I need to get an apology ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> do, is it is no, gonna be it is it gonna be a topic of something awkward like? It wasn't uh, anything like that. But do you think there's enough parents that would sign off on like thirty kids just been like, listen, if they clock your fucking kid, that's not your fault. Like yeah, we could it's called sell a li- this on, it's called a liability yeah, form. We could sell this on pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> like just get like a guy from the like a fuck like get some guy that like. I don't know. He works graveyards at fucking Zip Trip, and 
you know, goes home, has a beer or two, maybe smokes a bowl, and we put him in the... Andy Zilla against 30 10-year-olds yeah, for nine ninety yeah. five. Fuck, all right, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. You put, yeah, you put one fucking just random, like, just generic dude from this town and just have 30 10 year olds go after him <laughs> and, and you know what and, the, and there's breaks too if the kids want to bounce out they can like if they get clocked like all right i'm done and then he <laughs> he gets like a five minute break in between rounds <laughs> there's no concussion protocol yeah no yeah there's five minute breaks <laughs> The Quad M Fighting Championships. That'd be badass. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm for this. We could try take, to sell yes, this. Take my money. Now. I don't think Joey Styles isn't doing anything. We could probably get him on commentary. Get him. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I could, oh my god! <laughs> I could get a few UFC buddies to get him on it too. Just imagine t- going to a boardroom, talking to investors, and be like, "Can you get 30 us thirty ten year olds? <laughs> one man. You know, they're they're not doing anything. Can you get us Goldberg yeah. and Rogan for this one? Yeah, no shit." <laughs> You probably shouldn't pitch it like 30 10 year olds one man. That might not that might that might go south real quick, but <laughs> like Jerry Sandusky, you're like no, 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 not him. Not him. <laughs> Ed from Zip Trip up on Euclid. That's the one that we want. <laughs> Here's what we call him. We call him Andy Big Mac Mac. Yeah. And he goes out. And he's the monster. He's the monster. What is who's going to take him down? And then all of a sudden, 30 30! Count them! 30, not 29. What about small people? Oh, midgets? Yeah. Yeah, but they're wily. They got, see, that's the thing. They. I'd know, be afraid they'd bite. Yeah, that's, well, that's what I'm saying. They got, they, 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 they see, if, if we, if we went 30, 10 year olds, they don't have the wherewithal and the guile. Mm-hmm. The midgets, that's gonna be, that might, it's one of those deals where, if, if you're willing to fucking put up with the tenacity and the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the, 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 the old age and experience and slyness mm. and, and the guile and the weaving and bobbing versus, <laughs> versus 30, 10 year, for 30, 10 year old children with just eyes the size of fucking saucers going, <laughs> Andy Zuna's going to kill yeah, us exactly, all. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of it. I'll announce or something. I'll sit on the sideline. I'll give the guy. Oh, no, 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 no. It would have to be you. No, because I couldn't do it. I hit the first one. You'd see him start crying like, fuck. Yeah, I feel bad now. <laughs> well, so then it is. You tap, you tap, you tap out because your feelers got hurt. Yeah, see? that's true. We get you in that Roddy Piper outfit. Yeah, we might need to get a different outfit, but I think there's uh, there's copyright laws on that one. Well, there's no copyright on a kilt. Yeah, that's true. But I don't want people to see the Andy McNamara Charlie Browns. We'll have to find some <laughs> shorts or something to put on under. Oh, he, you know, he had always wore, <laughs> he always wore, really, he always wore blue trunks underneath. Yeah. So, you know, you wouldn't, I, you could, you, I can barely fit into my old fucking wrestling trunks from my pro days. <laughs> I can still fit in the singlet, you know, but it just, I got the fucking, you know, the gut hanging out. I, yeah. I wanted to be Bret Hart, but I fucking look more like Jim Neidhart. <laughs> I want to be the hitman, but now I'm the anvil. That's just how it is. <laughs> that's, uh, Except weaker. Yeah. <laughs> weaker and flabbier. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't believe we went a whole hour without talking about <laughs> wrestling. So <laughs> We'll make up for it on the yeah, next one. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> this, next week. <laughs> this one's for you, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, as we wrap this some bitch up, good sir, do you have any uh, 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 anything to... Uh, you know, uh, do you have any picks of the week? Okay, my uh, good friend and comedian Taylor Tomlinson, she was on Conan uh, this past week. Oh. So if you go on uh, Facebook and just type in Taylor Tomlinson Comedy, she'll be the first one to pop up. Go check out her video. Get uh, her to over a million likes. And you know what? She's kind of easy on the eyes, too. So, <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, go check her out. Check out her podcast, too, Self Helpless. She's with uh, another uh, girl that we used to do stand up with, Kelsey Cook. She's actually from Spokane. Mm-hmm. So she'll be in Spokane, I think, next week. They do a really, really interesting show where they have a comedian come out sober. And then, <laughs> and then they go backstage, get really fucking baked, <laughs> and then go on and do another set, which is absolutely fascinating to me. So. The difference in the dichotomy between the two. Exactly. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. It's such a good show. Because <laughs> I always thought about like a karaoke strip, like a karaoke um, like pole dancing competition. <laughs> okay. 
where someone sings karaoke and then your teammates pole dancing behind you. I don't know why I think about this stuff, but I think it'd be <laughs> fucking funny if we had something like that in this town. It doesn't have to be sexy. I mean, yeah, it does, but you don't have to get naked or anything. No. I, yeah, no, I couldn't pull off sexy pole dance, so I guess I'd be doing the fucking karaoke part. Yeah, exactly. That's all you have to do. Because I got pipes. And I don't want to miss a thing. All right, well, my pick of the week, and I've kind of been whoring this out to anybody who will listen to me about it, and, you know, here just moments ago, you heard my really shitty Vince McMahon impression with the 30, 30 10-year-old kids. Well, you know, I, I, I'm stealing that from Bruce Pritchard. You may remember him from the 80s as Brother Love. Well, he's got a podcast, and it's kind of the bee's knees. It's doing some shit. It just recently won, um, I believe it was a sports category for, from the, uh, the, 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 the American Podcast Awards or something along those lines. Um, they're hitting millions of downloads a day, or millions of downloads an episode. Uh, something to Wrestle With, Bruce Pritchard. Great podcast. If you are a fan of late 80s, early 90s, and then from, like, say, 93 to about 2007 or 8 when he left, uh, WWF, WWE, um, they go through a lot of, of, of wrestling history and everything that Pritchard was involved in. And it's really, it's really cool to be able to hear it from somebody that was there. You know, not speculation, not somebody that's trying to fucking, he was worried about editing too much of himself to save, you know, face to get a job again. He'd already, he'd already been working for them for 25 years. You know, if he goes back, he'll go back because they know him. Um, but, it's hosted by Bruce Pritchard and and Conrad Thompson, who is uh, who who uh, was the co-host for Woo Nation, the Ric Flair show, mm-hmm. uh, before Ric Flair quit doing the podcasting. Um, he's also currently doing um, uh, What Happened When uh, with Tony Schiavone, mm-hmm. voice of, of of really Southern wrestling from the eighties and nineties up until the end of WCW. And he spent one year in WWF, mm-hmm. um, but uh, yeah, if you get the chance. Check out some episodes. You like you like Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig? You got the, an episode specifically on him. Ravishing Recruit, check out that episode. Teddy Biasi, check out that episode. You like a certain pay-per-view? You want to hear the history of WrestleMania 6, WrestleMania, um, or WrestleMania 9, um, you know, various Summer Slams, uh, anything that, you know, they, they, they've, they've got like 60 episodes out right now. But the thing is, he was there for 25 years. There is plenty of stuff. They're going to have this show going on for a long fucking time. So definitely, if you have the chance, if you're a wrestling fan of any type, go check out Something to Wrestle With. It is a great fucking podcast. Get on that boat now. Um, so with that, good sir, do you have anything left to pimp, promote, propagate, or pander? Nothing yet, but uh, there's some big news coming. I'm sure I said it last time. We're going to have you on our show once we move into the house and everything like yes. that. So um, we're still trying to figure out a name for the new show, but it's going to be completely different from what Devin and I created, but it's going to be, it's going to be epic. I, I look forward to being a contributor. <laughs> Absolutely. You're more than welcome. Come on. Anytime. A, re- a regular contributor. I'm I'll whore out. <laughs> I'll show up. I don't, I don't give two shits. I'll show up. I'm good for that. All right, well, that will wrap it up for this week's episode of the Quad M Show. Again, hey, guys, if you get the chance, subscribe to us, iTunes, Stitcher, Android, anywhere you want to go. Get in on the get in on the horn. The numbers are going through the roof. Join the party. Get out there. Subscribe, rate, and review. It is so important that we hear from you and that we know you're digging us. Uh, give us that five star. It's a big deal. Like us on Facebook. Get out there. Quad M, or, uh, uh, Facebook.com. Slash Quad M Show. Like us. Share the show when it posts. Again, it's it's you guys that are making this show the success that it's becoming. Get out there. Do it. Grassroots, baby. We're all about it. So, until next time, this is TJ. And you, man. And we will see you all later, gang. Take care. Woo! You've been listening to the Quad M Show. Copyright 2017. Quad M Productions. If you have any comments, questions, queries, quibbles, or concerns, email us at quadmcomics at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at quadmcomics.